Hey guys, welcome to today's podcast episode. I'm really excited. Fourth quarter, almost coming to the end of the year. And we've got Matt Shields. He's the founder and CEO of Chime House Media. Another favorite topic of mine is internet marketing. And so he's going to talk all about social media marketing, growing your podcast, growing your audience through Facebook and Instagram ads. It's a really interesting topic that I love. And I'm happy to welcome him to the show. So Matt, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, I'd be amiss if I didn't mention that my wife is the CEO. <laughs> she, <laughs> she correct me on that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, kind of tell people your story. I'm always interested in how people, you know, grew like their followings to millions and how they, you know, developed this skill. It's and especially internet marketing. It's a really valuable skill to have today. Yeah. Yeah. So our entrepreneurship journey started four years ago. Uh, my wife and I were in uh, corporate jobs and we COVID hit and we started a side thing that became our job thing. So we jumped in with both feet to, uh, to digital marketing. It's been really tremendous and it's been a full time job just keeping up with Facebook and Instagram. So <laughs> the the platforms known as meta. But yeah, we, we specialize in that. But uh, our our agency handles everything from Google, YouTube, anything like that. But we've been specializing recently in uh, helping podcasters, and that's been an interesting journey in and of itself. It's a really great community, and I really do mean that. And podcasts are, from a marketing standpoint, tremendous, just because it's your job to create content all the time. So, like, it's perfect. But we've been uh, we've been in Facebook and Instagram now for four years, keeping up with uh, everything that they have from the data aggregation problems to the privacy laws and everything like that. Apple threw a wrench in there and in, uh, in 2021. So we've had to navigate that and it's actually helped us uh, going forward. Yeah, really interesting. And um, so kind of talk about um, what I really love is um, how are you using or how are people using Facebook and Instagram ads to grow their podcast? Yeah, this is really great. So basically, you have to understand how the algorithm on Facebook and Instagram works, right? It's it's a it's a social media site. So it's meant to keep you on the platform. <laughs> and it shows you things that are entertaining, educational, whatever people interact with. So what we use is a strategy to get new people into your world, make sure the messaging resonates with those people. And as a podcaster, again, if you have a video podcast and your content is curated and you have a niche especially and especially if you're a business owner who's using your podcast as an authority play or something like that it's it works really well you basically show new content to all these new people and then you can retarget those people you can show them more of your content so you have a 100 percent trackable retargetable audience so you can filter people with your content so that you don't have 10,000 maybes hanging around you want people who are going to continue to interact with you down the line and it's really tremendous just because in the world of podcasting, no one's come to save you from the data aggregation monster yet. You still have to go to each of these individual streaming services and figure out how many downloads you got and where, and you might know where they came from, but you don't know where to put your marketing dollars. So this is, uh, it's, it's really helpful and I'm hoping to, to help a bunch of people do it. Yeah. It's really interesting because podcasting is kind of a, it's like, um, it's, well, it's a new field and you know um, you know like websites you had seo you had blogs all of that and then you have social media where you have to like individually get the algorithm and then podcast is kind of in the middle is still new like seo and um uh you know all of these different tools and tactics to grow um the other question is um it's really interesting once you kind of understand your community and then you can use these um strategies um Talk about how um, how AI because the the la the other day I was using TubeBuddy and you know they've got this new thing where it's like YouTube is the the new features incorporating AI to help grow. How are how is um, uh, Facebook Instagram using AI in their ad strategy? So it's essentially just the algorithm. They've been using AI for a while, and they haven't gone caught on to like the the copywriting part of it yet. Uh, so you can use chat GPT or anything like that, any AI driven software, just because it's, 
it does not i can tell you right now chat gpt generated copy does not does not convert as well as handwritten copy yet but it learns every day on itself 10x so like it's a matter of time it also has to do with the quality of input right so i'm excited for it but it's one of those things where i've always been a fan of the targeted ads myself because if i'm spending time on the internet and i know it's free this is i'm under no grand illusion that i'm not going to see advertising or hear advertising you listen to the radio your whole life you hear advertising that's how it's free so wouldn't you rather hear or see things that are relevant to you right so under the and people freak out under the guise of privacy but you it's delusions of grandeur if you have a driver's license or a debit card you're on the grid so i'd rather use it for good and just see those targeted ads but the the ai generation they've been using the algorithm for a really long time and you have to keep up with how it changes and it's really easy to test they say they're not listening but i've i've seen some things that i test it all the time so I've seen some things even in the last couple of days where we were watching, we were watching the Sopranos on HBO max and I got post about some Italian memes and stuff like that. And I saw 10 pieces of content in the next 10 minutes, just yeah. testing out like, Oh, you like the Sopranos? You'll love this here. But I didn't, I didn't search it on the internet or whatever, but if all your accounts are hooked up to the same email, who knows where your data is going. So the algorithm yeah. works the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, yeah, that's, it's really, um, interesting because, uh, how everything is interconnected, um, and you know, all these recommendations, um, the other question I, I have is, um, around this idea of, um, where you've got these, you know, you've got AI and one thing that I've been experimenting with is, um, so people sometimes it was kind of like you had organic growth and then, um, you had ads, right. And then, if you could hack the algorithm, you could grow organically very quickly. And then ads was kind of like um, pouring gasoline on the fire. Um, but now with, uh, I've been experimenting with um, viral short reels and that's almost like ads, except it's just kind of like, it's pouring gasoline on the fire, but it's not without ads. So kind of talk about, you know, viral short form marketing ads yep. in this strategy. Yeah. So we use reels ads as well. So, the, the gist of it is when Facebook introdu introduced Reels, it's to compete with TikTok, period. So Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels. And when I, talk, when I say Facebook, understand that I mean Facebook and Instagram. So when they introduced Reels and Stories, it was to compete with TikTok. And it's a TikTokification of everything. It's just how you consume data now. You just, it's endless scrolling. So what happened was in the beginning, um, earlier this year, late last year, uh, even even late 2021 i would say it started so with the the trends the TikTok trends you know you have dances you have all these things you have trending audio you have all that you can't use trending audio in an ad but you can it, you can do other things so it's set up for pay to play now and what i mean by that is in the beginning they boosted your organic reach of these reels because they wanted you to use reels more so if you used a reel pro properly, you could reach 10,000 people a month. It'd be great. Now, now the reach is throttled. Everybody complained about it all at once. They throttled it on purpose because now it's pay to play. So organic reach across the board on average is around 1%. Hmm. It's bad. And that's people who follow you. So if you're lucky enough to have a thousand followers, you're talking to 10 people every time you post, every time you post right? So it's hard to reach new people without you have to be super, if you're trying to do it organically, you have to be super consistent. You have to do hashtag research. You have to cross promote. You have to go like other people's stuff and hope they like your stuff. It's just a, it's a slog. It's very hard, but organic strategies are super important when you're using ads because you have to stay consistent and you're not just forcing the issue. However, throwing ads into the mix, even cost effective ads where you rely on on platform actions, meaning engagements, uh, lead forms, things like that, anything where they don't have to leave Facebook, you want to have a good organic strategy to go along with it because you want to stay consistent. You want people to see your stuff and you want the algorithm and you'll hear me 
talk about the algorithm like it's a person because you have to. But you want the algorithm to learn that your content is consumable. It's likable. It's people like it. So if you get the more engagement you get, it will naturally boost your, your organic stuff. It will. And it'll just keep people on the platform. And that's the whole point. The whole point is to keep you on the platform so it can show you more advertising. That's once you understand that you can roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. Like once you figure out the algos and kind of you kind of tailor it's, it's almost, <laughs> I, I uh, liken it to, um, you know, people like social media influencers, they're kind of, they have companies and businesses, but they still, you know, kind of these algos are kind of like their bosses, <laughs> which is, uh, interesting. Um, but, uh, the talk about, um, so we, you know, we talk about Facebook, Instagram ads, um, where is like the, I'm always looking for the, um, where all the attention is. So, um, where are like, I've, I've seen LinkedIn ads. I've seen YouTube ads. TikTok ads is actually, so Twitter ads kind of, where is the next platform where, you know, they're going to start promoting advertising. So it's the, anything with advertising, you have to go where your audience is. And this is something that you should test. We're never all your eggs in one basket people, but we're also not omni-channel people, right? And we understand that people have small businesses and you can't stretch nothing over everything. So you should focus where your audience really is, but it depends on the age demographic of your audience, right? And you should start there. TikTok is a younger crowd. Facebook is an older crowd. Instagram is right in between. It's a lot of millennials and there's young people on Instagram as well. Um, if you sell products, TikTok is a fantastic place to do it. If you sell services, the what I love for podcasters specifically is Instagram and YouTube. If you're going to start, if you're going to whittle it down to two, Instagram and YouTube, just because that's what we've noticed. YouTube, I really love because analytics, you should really know where you're spending your time and your money and you want to know why Google analytics is free and it's useful. So you want to be able to see where people are coming from and you want to get a clue of who those people are so you can whittle down who your audience is that niche. Facebook and Instagram are really tremendous for this too, because you can test these things. It's testable. Right. And you can see it in the numbers. You can let the numbers decide and not just go off a hunch. But TikTok, I've heard tremendous things about if you're selling products, if you're selling products, and you want to show the products, short video clips, if you're selling houses. It's really great. Like if you want to hi if you want to highlight a product, highlight the product, short little videos of the product. It's really great. Or it being used. It's awesome. But if you're selling services, the reason I love long form as opposed to short form, short form, you can consume like six second videos of people and it's bingeable and it generates at least a little bit of interest. But the reason I love podcasting is because what better way to break down the no like and trust time and gain more authority than to listen to somebody speak on a specific topic for half an hour or whatever. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, like I said, there's so many different strategies and, you know, sometimes I like, I like going to shorts and just listening to clips kind of like, just kind of like teasers and, yes. um, and, uh, so the, like long form is, you know, if you, you want to sit down and you want to like consume it and, you know, um, on the go, uh, really interesting. Then you also talk about getting your podcast in front of the right people consistently. Um, yeah. how do you do that? So with the, with the targeting options that are available using Facebook ads, you can whittle it down, right? So you have to, you can't get as granular with your targeting on the internet anymore because of privacy laws or you just can't. So you have to filter these people somehow. And we use content to do that. And podcast content is fantastic because especially you, for example, financial freedom for physicians. Are they all physicians? Are they private practice physicians? Are they like, you know, so this is a good example. I'll, I'll use, I'll use lawyers. Okay. If you're trying to target divorce lawyers, specifically divorce lawyers, and you have to target and they take away that targeting option and you have to target lawyers, you're going to start playing a longer game. If you want to make sales or you want people to work with you. 
So you have to warm those people up. You have to wade through all of the other lawyers and you have to make sure that your messaging is on point so that divorce lawyers understand that you're speaking directly to them. So what we help you do is create a strategy to find those exact right people all the time. We create exclusion audiences, we create custom audiences, dynamic audiences, all these things to target and retarget those people to make sure that the right people are seeing your content and you're not just throwing it out on the internet and hoping that they see it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And talk about, um, so it's all about strategy and, um, and, uh, also your brand messaging. Um, also talk about using a podcast to cement your authority and looks like, you know, ads and, you know, all these different tools and strategies help you scale both quality and quantity, but talk about using a podcast to cement your authority. It's like I said, it's perfect. So if you have a good clip, from a podcast that's about a hot button topic for physicians. I can't think of one. I'm not a physician, <laughs> but you can you can get it. So if you're targeting physicians, okay, and you're speaking directly to them about pain points or solving problems for them, and you have a solution to those problems and you get it directly to them more often, they're gonna start following you because they're like, oh, this guy, Chris Liu, he has a podcast. He talks about this stuff all the time. So people would put podcasts on. The reason I love podcasts is because you can download a podcast or you can stream a podcast and do literally anything else. You can drive your car on the way to the <laughs> office. You can be working. You can do anything. You can listen to, you can consume it while you're doing other things. And that's such an advantage over other marketing tactics. Like it's, it's such an advantage. And it's human because you're speaking on a subject for a half an hour. It's not scripted. You mess up. You, you speak your mind. You should, you should anyway, you should be real because people buy from people. So when you speak about a subject matter for a half an hour or several episodes or 150 episodes, people trust you and they'll run and they end up wanting to work with you. It's just, it's just human nature. So rather than consuming a bunch of six second clips about somebody, just listen to a podcast. It's a, such an easy ask to get somebody to download a podcast that you're going to get cheap. If you use a podcast download as an ad, it'll get cheap results if you target the right people. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And it's kind of like uh, social radio. It's kind of and then, um, you know, with smartphones and you know, audiobooks, and, uh, you know, it's also intimate because people are actually tuning in to listen. So you may have a small listenership, but it's actually they're, they're engaged and it's like a community, um, which is very powerful. Uh, really interesting. How can people contact you, you know, check out Chime House Media, check out the work that you and your wife do, follow you on yeah. social media. You were at Chime House Media on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, check me out on LinkedIn. I'm always on LinkedIn for some reason. Um, we're on Podmatch. we're on a bunch of different platforms, but you can find us at chimehousemedia.com. If you're interested in growing your podcasts, just hit us up there, schedule an appointment. We'll talk to you. It's just my wife and I, so you'll get us. And, uh, that's it. We just like how we like meeting people, having honest conversations and helping them direct them in the right, point them in the right direction. Anyway. Yeah. And uh, thanks so much, Matt, for coming on to the podcast. And all of the resources will be in the links in the show notes for the listeners. And um, be sure to check out Chime House Media. And thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Thanks for having me.